Can you introduce yourselves? Sure. Um, my name is Jude Joseph, Dr. Jude Joseph. Um, my tribal name is Saken Sakam Reye. Uh, my name is Eric Nelson Hamaya. My um, AO name or Sabian name is Asaru Tuhuti Atum. Right, so we are from um, Nishat, which is an African cultural centre in Croydon. Um, we um, deal with African culture and spirituality, um, known as Wusabat. And um, we basically want to make more people become aware of what Wusabat is. Um, Wusabat is not a religion, it predates religion. So we don't really um, subscribe to like the monotheistic religions, that's Islam, Judaism, excuse me, and Christianity. But we've studied them thoroughly because w what it is, is we predate all of them. So we go back to ancient African culture. And so we are aware of where everything comes from because we deal with the original or the roots. And even when you get to Africa, you know, people might talk about, you know, Egypt or Kemet or these various names that they call the, you know, the place in Africa. But our ancestors, they actually go back to the stars from, from the Orion and Sirius constellation. So this is where we tie all the way back to. So when we talk about Wusabat as a culture, we have our own language because language is very important anyone with a culture has to have their own language and it's the original language the first language on the planet when we say that um, people might talk about things like hieroglyphics you know the writings on the wall in egypt or even cuneiform going back to like the anunnaki stories but what people don't realize is that those are scripts of this language known as Nuapic. Uh, but in our own tongue, we call it misbatia, you know. So um, we're here to really give people the opportunity to learn more about our culture of Usabat. And we're happy to, you know, address any questions or anything that, you know, you may want to know. Has it, is this something that's always been a part of you? Or how did you kind of learn to... To come across Usabat? Yeah, yeah. So like everyone else, you know, you grow up. Um, and you more than likely take on what your parents, you know what I mean, you're brought up in. So that if you're in a Christian home, then you're going to become a Christian. But um, as a young person, I always had questions, you know, um, just always used to ask questions about everything. Um, and I found that my parents couldn't really answer those questions. The church couldn't answer those questions. School couldn't ask, answer those questions. So. As time went on, um, you just kind of search, and then I came across I came across Wu Sabat or um, the books that were written by Dr. Malachi Z. York, who we refer to as the Master Teacher, or Pa Nabab Yanun. And um, when I started to read these books, I don't know if you may have seen the interview with Prodigy. He mentioned a similar sort of thing where he was doing the same thing, like, yeah. and he came across the books in New York. And he started to read the books and then that kind of sparks you off. And for me personally, when I started to read the books, I realised that we've been lied to a lot, you know, like about everything, like history, science, um, name it. It was like there's so much misinformation or completely wrong information. So that's kind of my, how my journey started. I don't know how yeah, my brother... Yeah, me, basically, I was raised up as a Roman Catholic that right. uh, to go to church Sunday. Mum used to give us money to donate. I spent half of that on sweets. So there was, <laughs> there was already this rebellion side of me. Yeah. But um, basically I went shopping in, uh, I was doing shopping in Peckham and then something, this inner boy said, you know, go in the indoor market. So I went in there, I met two brothers. They started talking about this information that I thought, ah, oh, another religious thing, not really interested in. But I bought a video, a Roswell video, watched that and my brother came about, Two, three days later, with one of Malachi's video called Elohim. So I watched that and it was just like everything from when I was little, I was, I was always into UFO, Egypt and stuff like that. And it just tied in. My brother said to me, don't follow it. I'll just use the information and just, you know, to better yourself. But 
I just got hooked on it, man. It was just like, yeah, it's yeah. based on it's actual facts. Now you do your research on what this brother's written. It's there. It's there. And they say the truth is out there. So it's for one to do their own research and then find out for themselves. It's not a belief thing. Except yeah, do your research. Become like Columbo, Scalia, Molda. Investigate and you'll find out. It's based on actual facts. Right, right. So if someone's got questions, what kind of questions would spark um, someone looking into it? Well, do you know what? Um, what? Like what my brother said, one of the things I did, because I'm a very sceptical person myself, yeah. so it wasn't like just um, follow this thing blindly. So when mm. I read the book, and the way the books are written, they're all based on question and answers anyway. So anyone would ask him a question and he would write a whole book on that question. So what I was doing is I was, and, he, and one of the famous things he, that people who are familiar with him will know, he always said, don't believe me, check it out. So that's what I did. I was like, nah, I need to know. So I used to go to the classes in Brixton um, and ask questions from what I read, what I've studied. And I used to, I was like, I'm going to see if I can ask them a question that they can't answer. And it was like, no matter what question I came with, they were able to answer it. <laughs> Um, and it was quite amazing. So I guess to answer your question, it's based on whatever question you've got, because he basically covered everything. Like I said, religion, history, science, um, astronomy, name it, you know. So that's why the series of books he puts out are called Actual Facts or The Master's Secrets. But we've also got our own way of life for the culture, which is known as Partarak or Partaruk. So, the best thing to do is, if you can, because we've got a store, as I said already, in Croydon, um, we've got a lot of his books and other authors as well. So what I did is actually compared him with everybody else that was on the planet at the time. So I was listening to like The Nation of Islam, Minister Luz Farrakhan. I was listening to just like Sunni Muslims and I already came from a Christian background anyway. So it was easy to do comparative analysis or like ask other people the same questions and then you kind of see what answers you get and then you just make up your own mind for yourself. So yeah, you can literally ask questions about anything. New. Someone who would be yeah, new and, and looking for answers of the earth, is, yeah. is it kind of stuff like, you know, who created the earth? You know, mm -hmm. is there more to life? Is it, is it that, those kind of questions? Literally anything. Yeah, right. yeah but you're right. Um, so what we did is we, we were taken through a series of schools. Um, and when I say taken through them, we were actually like living the the life of a Christian and the life and time. We studied like the, the Bible, we read it in like the Greek. We, we also did the same when we were studying Islam. And we studied the Quran, we read, you know, and learned Arabic when we were going through like the Judaism or the school or the Hebrew, like we, we studied the Torah, we studied the Hebrew, and then he took us through to like the Anunnaki stories. So you're dealing with the Sumerian text. Um, then we went into what people call Kemet or Egypt um, and we studied that until it was literally like we were walking back to our own culture, um, which is Wusabat. And that's kind of like where everything came from anyway, you know, so it kind of made it easy to tie in the pieces because, you know, there's always a root to everything. If you look at a tree, there's a, root, a seed and it grows and then there's branches, but the actual foundation will always be the same. So when you start to look at the different branches, you see where they all kind of came from. Yeah, so literally, um, any question. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely interesting. Yeah, yeah. spirituality, um, yeah, anything. You know, we, we actually, that's a really good question because the format that Malachi used to teach was he stood up and said, anyone come and ask me any question mm. right. from any walks of life, professors, religious people, archaeologists, and so that's the format that we also utilise. So when we have our classes, we literally have it open to the public, to anyone to come and ask us questions. And like I said, from the questions, the books are written, you know. So, yeah, we are the only organisation I really know that since like the 70s, um, Malachi started teaching like from the 60s, 1962, mm. but he opened it officially to the public in 1970. And from that time till today, we still are able to open our classes to anyone worldwide to ask us questions about anything. Wow. You know, so we've been doing that for over 50 years 
and still going strong. Still going. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a yeah. lot, a lot of knowledge that comes with it as well. Because yeah. you said you got to learn about every religion as well, right? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is is knowledge power? Only if you use it properly. Mm. Yeah. Because you can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't utilize it or don't use it, then it, what's the point of having it? Mm. You know. So knowledge is power if it is utilized in the proper way. Yeah. To elevate self and kind as well. That's the most that's the key important thing. Mm. So okay, so elevation of yourself as well. And so, kind. And mm. kind, right, yeah. right. <laughs> that's good. This is well, like a sense of empowerment as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Every race on the planet have their own identity, mm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um so uh Wusabat, is it called? That's right. correct, yeah. yeah. With with Wusabat, have you felt like you've um had more of an identity within yourself as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, it starts off from you. Everyone's journey is different. Like you say, someone might just be wanting to know information about Christianity, Islam, Judaism. Someone else might want to know information about, like you said, the planet, the universe, and how did we come about? Where do things come from? You know what I mean? Somebody else, somebody else might have some other interest. So, yeah, it's really based on what is it your journey is, is taking you on and what do you want to know, you know? So, um, yeah, it's kind of hard because we cover a circumference of information mm -hmm. <clears throat> dealing with the spiritual side of things or what people term spirituality, and we also cover the, the physical side of things. So it's not just, do you know what I mean? We, we like to put into practice the knowledge that we're taught. So it's also about building. Do you know what I mean? Like building our own businesses and um, helping people to grow and being and just basically everything we need to be self-sufficient. We also about that. So it's not just one aspect. So we cover 360 degrees of physical and 360 degrees of what people might call spiritual or we say the unseen and the seen world. Right. So put the two together, you get 720 degrees, you know, so yeah. And then you add the seven and the two, plus the zero, you get nine, which is the highest number. So we deal with nine ether. I mean, if we say anything you're not familiar with and you want us to go into more yeah, detail, right. we can. But nine ether is like the spiritual science of our woolly-haired nine ether um, beings on the planet, original yeah. beings on the planet, which is what you know ended up going in different directions and different people got pieces of it. And you know what I mean? Why, so, why is nine the highest number? Because if you look at numbers, yeah, you really count from zero. You go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you get to nine, it's a compound numbers next. So you just compound in the two numbers. So 10 will be oh. zero, I mean, one and zero. 11 is one and one. 12 is one and two. But you're not getting any new numbers. And if you carry it on, you're going to get to nine, 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 or nine to the ninth power of nine, which is, they say, infinity. Yeah. yeah so that's why nine is the highest number. But when you start to go into the numerology and things like that, you also see the significance of the number nine, which is very powerful. Right. Yeah. And what, and what is ether? Ether is a combination of all existing gas, chemicals and elements that exist in and through nature. Mm. Right. So nine ether is the most potent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a combination of all conscious and conscience gases. Yeah. Is this unseen or seen? Both. Mm. Right. See, that's what I'm saying to you. Like, again, that's actually a good question mm. because when people say unseen, what it is is things are there, but just because the eye can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. Mm -hmm. So scientifically, if you're looking at like the periodic um, element chart, you'll have, they will say hydrogen, H1, was the first element. This was before they knew there were things beyond hydrogen. You get it? So even in mathematics, like, you will have zero, but you can have minus one, minus two, minus three, going that way. And then going this way, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So you can always subdivide things, yeah? So when they're dealing with um, like the beginning of atoms, they used to say before they had apparatus to kind of look at what they call quantum physics and subdivide atoms, they used to say hydrogen was the first element. Then you had helium, but now with technology they were able to break down um, the smallest atom and then they realized that you had quarks, zeles, biaps, you see what I mean, going that way, which is subatomic. So now they're able to use apparatus and see um, 
lighter or smaller elements beyond beyond the um, hydrogen. Right. So does that make sense? So even though they were saying there's nothing, because when you say nothing, what you're saying is no thing. The, the, the sum of things go to the right. So the, they will say H1 because they can sum it up. So they will say something. But people just hear S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G. But it's really S-U-M-T-H-I-N-G, the sum of a, a thing. So what is a thing? You see what I mean? So when you go lower, there's still things which they will say no thing or we say nothing. But if you took a, a cup, you have to create space within the cup or the glass, even though you're saying there's nothing there, mm -hmm. but you created that space so you can put something in it. You get it? That's true, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's, that's a good way to look at it, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a good example. Yeah. So that's why in Islam, for example, they say that, um, well, the master teacher, Pana Babi Anuno, Dr. Malik Aziyu, back then he was saying that Allah created the state of nothingness mm -hmm. to then create things. Everybody was like, that's crazy. How can you create the state of nothingness? Mm -hmm. But that was just like the example I gave about creating the space and the glass to put something in it. So what people are calling like the universe actually comes from something. Right. And, and then we can go into the, you know, the planets and so on and so on as well. But yeah, so um, things exist in the unseen world and people will say spirits, ghosts and, you know what I mean, go into that realm. But they still exist. Yeah. Yeah, do you, yeah, that's a good question. Do you, be, do you believe in spirits and ghosts? Yeah, okay, okay. One of the things we must clarify, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, don't use, we don't deal with the word belief. belief. Right, right. Yeah, because you can believe anything you want. And we, we don't, like, stop people from believing. We respect everyone's belief. You can have a belief, but the reality is, like, there's higher levels. Belief leads you to knowing. And if you look at the word belief or believe, Literally, you can see the word lie in the middle of those two words. And what I mean by that is you can believe in Father Christmas. You can believe pigs can fly. You can believe whatever you want, but it doesn't make it true. And when you actually go and do a, a study of what does the word belief mean, like if you go on Google now, yeah. we've got smartphones, search, what does the word belief mean? It will literally tell you that belief means the acceptance of things you do not know or cannot prove. Mm. That's the definition of belief. So we deal with facts. Yeah, that's why I mentioned our books are called Actual Facts. Because a fact is something that it's not about like what I believe or what you believe or what you believe. It's like a fact is a fact. Like I can say, and I did this um, little test the other day. I asked everyone in the room, um, who are you and where are you from? And people said all kinds of stuff. You know, like I'm from Peckham, I'm from Brixton, I'm from Croydon. I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher. I'm all of these things. And then I said, all right, that divides us. Or oh, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian. I said, like, if I was to say I'm an earthling, that cuts it all out. Mm. Everyone's an earthling, you see what I mean? Yeah. So what I'm saying is we deal with something or facts that will unite us, not divide us. So it's good to believe, but it's better to know. So belief is really based on, you can believe anything, but um, facts are based on, can you prove it? Can you give us some evidence? You know what I mean? That's, that's what we deal with, actual facts. Okay. Do you want to add anything to that? Mm. Yeah. yeah, better to know than belief. Yeah. yeah. The word belief, like, if you're lost, for example, when you ask someone for directions, you believe them. You don't know. They could be setting you up. Yeah, so better to know than, than belief. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. I see. So I've got to be careful how I word it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we can use anything, but, you know, we just let you know that, how that, we... Yeah, 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 no, that's, that's, that's that, you know, yeah. the difference yeah. between believing and knowing, yeah. yeah. And listen to the word knowing, yeah? When you look at the word knowledge, yeah. the first part of that is what? To know. To know yeah. mm. And that's why you said knowledge is powerful, because to know is better than guess, because anything that's important to you, you want to know. Like, if I was to say to you, I'm going to give you a job, and I just said, like, believe me, your money's going to be in your account next week. You're not going to want to believe it. You're going to want to see the money in your account, isn't it? So you want the details, like, when do I start work? How, how many hours do I have to work? How much holidays do I get? When is my money in my account? And it's the same with your health. If something's wrong with you, you're not taking chances. You want to know, like, get the, you know what I mean? Di diagnose me and tell me what's wrong with me. Mm. And then you want the facts. Because if I just said you got cancer and you didn't have cancer and you just believe that, you're going to stress for no reason. But if you knew for sure, 
then you might be able to do something about it. Yeah, so that's the difference between knowing and believing. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> that's cool, I'm wrapping my head around it. Yeah, yeah it's all good. <laughs> so does that mean that words are, are very powerful? Oh my goodness. <clears throat> do you want to deal with that one? Or? Um, yeah, w w yeah w words are powerful, like... I can't, I can't or or is, it, is it more powerful than, than we, like the common knowledge? Yeah, because you know what, everyone it's, would know. It's, 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 when you say words, you have to think, how were words put together? First of all, right? You first of all have a, like an alphabet, yeah? And then the alphabet builds the words. And then the words build a, a sentence. And then the sentence builds a paragraph. The paragraph will build a chapter. The chapter will build a book. Mm -hmm. And then you call the people who wrote the book an author. So they have the authority over you because they wrote the book. Now, when you're dealing with language, you're dealing with tones, and vibrations and frequency. Mm -hmm. So when, when you're put under a spell, it's under spellings, as in spelling words. This is why people will be confused because you say, you say words in English. You say God, Allah, heaven, hell, spirit, Jesus, Muhammad, all these words. But when you go back and research the words and say, what language do they come from? Like you're reading the Bible in English, but it's translated or copied from God's language. Mm -hmm. So you're like, what's God's language then? Because English didn't exist up until 525 AD or, I mean, years ago. So it's like, so what did God speak? What was God's language? The Muslims will say the Quran, for example, and say Arabic. And you say, but Arabic is, and the Quran is only 1400 years old. Mm -hmm. The Christians, that New Testament will say Greek, but you're like, that's 2000 years old. The Old Testament or the people that follow the Torah will say Hebrew. Mm -hmm. You're like, that's only 4,400 years ago. Mm -hmm. But the planet's been here for millions of years and you've had different cultures, like the, the, the um, the Aztecs, the Zoo Aztecs, the Mayans, the Hindus, the Chinese, the Egyptians, the Sumerian, who all predate the Bible. Mm -hmm. So what language did they speak? So what it is, like I said at the beginning, you go back to the original language, which is our language known as Nuwapik or Misbatia, which then clears up the spell. Because you might have a word, like for example, God. Uh, in the Bible it says, in the beginning, God, the first time you hear that word, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. But then when you go into the Hebrew, it doesn't say God, it mm -hmm. says Elohim, which is a plural, meaning more than one. Because the, if you know Hebrew, you have a Yod and a Mim at the end of the word, yeah? So Elo will be uh, singular, singular, and then the, the I am or Im, or which is the Yod and the Mim, will be Elohim, which is plural. So that's like in English, you put G-O-D for God, and then when you add an S to the end of it, it changes it from single to plural. So that's why when people are reading the Bible, they're confused, because it says, let us make man in our image and our likeness. And you're like, who's the us? Mm -hmm. Who's the our? Because if there's one person speaking, they would say, let me make God in my image and in my likeness. I don't know if I'm going over your head. No, no, now, it's just, I'm like, taking it in. Yeah, yeah, so I'm saying it's like the spells are casted through the words and the spellings. And this is why you have to go back to the tones that our culture, where we, we actually explain things properly. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, you're like, oh, Elohim, this is more than one. And then you go to other cultures, it'll be like the Neteru, in, you know, Egypt, or, you know what I mean, the Anutu, or, you know what I mean, depending on which culture you're going to, you start to see these beings that are basically more than one and they're working together and they're all coming down here and doing certain things. Anunnaki, for example. Again, Anunnaki is, um, if you break the word down, Anu, who is the most high of the Sumerian doctrine, who had two sons, Enlil and Enki, and you're saying Anunnaki, the planet, the planet Earth was called Ki at one point. This is where you get G or Geo or geometry and all that comes from the word Ki, yeah? So what you're saying is Anu sent beings in groups of 50 that's what Na is, to the planet Ki, and they came here, you see what I mean? But people just go Anunnaki, but like, okay, what does Anunnaki mean? And then you can't, you get confused unless you can break the word down in the language, you see? So, um, Anu was a god or gods? 
Yeah, he's a god of the Sumerian doctrine. Mm. They, they, in the Bible, he's referred to as the Most High. Yeah. But the thing about that, now check this out, <laughs> levels, yeah? For him to say he's the Most High, yeah. even that should make someone think, like, okay, how do you measure high or low? Because if you're the most high, like for example, if I had two things, one has to be short or taller for you to be able to go the most high. So the question should be the most high of what? And then in the Bible, because they translate that now, they say, have no other gods but me. Yeah. And in Islam, they say, la ilaha illa Allah, which is also, there's only one God but Allah. Now you're saying, if there's only one and you're saying have no others but me, mm. doesn't make sense. Because how can I have any others if there's no others to have or exist? So what, by saying that, they're actually telling you that, that there's more than one what you're calling God. So Anunnaki or Anu was just a being that was ruling at that time. And other beings ruled at different times. Just like in America or in the UK, you'll have like a prime minister, which is a seat. Yeah, but different people can hold that seat, like president. You know, you've had like Obama, now you've got um, Biden, you had Trump, you had, you know what I mean, different people. It's the same thing with that title, the Most High was held by different people at different times. So there were different Anus, you know. Oh, what I mean? right, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Um, also known as the Sky Father, or is that? Well, that's one of his sons, because the two sons, you had Enlil and Enki, mm -hmm. and um, Enki was father of the, of the key or the planet Earth yeah. and Enlil was father of the skies. But Anu was obviously in Nibiru, which is a planetoid craft. And so he was in the craft above them as well. So when you, when you say craft, what do you mean? Um, extraterrestrial crafts. Yeah. Like when I say craft, like we are used to aeroplanes, right? Flying from one place to the <coughs> other. But when you're flying or traveling intergalactically, from one planet to another or through dimensions, you have to have different types of crafts to, to travel with. And it's not even that, it might sound weird to some people, yeah? yeah? But when you start reading the Bible and the Quran, you see all throughout, like Ezekiel's will, they talk about the crystal city in the book of Revelation, um, Daniel saw, you know, there's many, like the, the cloud that um, children of Israel. the children of Israel were throwing, were stopping and all of that. It's just that people didn't, interpret it at that time as a craft. Do you see what I mean? But obviously we're living in a different day and time now with technology and m multiple sightings and people all around the world have confirmed even the United States government have recently done something called disclosure mm. to, to accept and admit that there's many crafts. Right. Even Hitler had crafts back in, in the day, <coughs> you see what I mean? Okay, I'm going to come back to that because there's a, there's a lot to discuss in that. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, we, we're here for every, every, everything, yeah. man. We can go in. I, w I want to ask what your names mean. Okay. Um, Asaru Tahuti Atu means one who sees the sacred writings of the undifferentiated one. Tua. Wow. Yeah. And, and your uh, name? Uh, my name is Saken, Sakam Reye. Um, Saken means trusted. Um, Sakam means powerful, so... The entire name is um, Trusted and Powerful One of Ray or Ray A. Yeah. And are these names given to you or, or chosen? Yeah, when we become um, initiated in, well, part of the first steps of being initiated mm -hmm. into the ancient Egyptian order, right. you receive your, your tones or your names. But you get different names throughout the different schools anyway, because names are just titles. Do you know what I mean? So, like I said, Anu is a title of the Most High. But yeah, even, um, even like if you said Jesus, you go back to the different languages. In, in Arabic, they will say Isa. In Hebrew, it's going to be Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So depending on the language, you're going to get different titles. So what well, Yahshua means, what, Saviour? Yeah, Christ, that's a different name. That means from, from the word Christos, which means anointed. You see, so if you even look at like um, Gabriel, you're really looking at, three words put toge together, Geb, Re, and El, you see, but they're three different languages because you're dealing with Geb from the Egyptian mm -hmm. and Ra also from the Egyptian and El from the El Elohim. Put together, you get Gabriel, like Abraham's the same, Ab, Ra, and Ham, which is Ham or Ham in the language. So, you know, they're all titles for 
describing who they were and what they were doing at the time. Yeah. Right. And the initiation process, how do you, do you have to do, do you have to reach a certain kind of level of understanding before you become initiated? Um, no, the first thing is to want to know more and then you start by studying and just reading and then um, once you're, you're, you're around you can make an application because there's an application process um, and then if you are invited um, to be initiated. But even, even though we have the ancient Egyptian order, you, that's not the only way to be involved with the organisation mm -hmm. because we have many different like, levels or orders within our, um, you know what I mean, our culture. So you have like um, young student disciples or the word disciple just means a student. Um, so um, we have what we call the Madrusu Tashruk, which is a um, student association. We have things for the elders. We have orders for the women, um, orders for the brothers. Um, but yeah, you know, you can get involved in many different ways. Or you can just be someone who just comes to class and just ask questions as you're learning until you get to a point where you, you make the decision for yourself. And, and what you're wearing, is it, um, is it traditional clothing or, or religious clothing or how would you describe it? Traditional, yeah, our, our attire, like we're trying to promote African or black, black um, awareness. Yeah. So rather than wear Westerners clothes, we yeah, wear, just like any other race, the Indians wear their, their cultural garments. Yeah, so yeah, we're promoting our, our garments. This is, this is who we are. We're representing who we are. You know what? You're one of the first people, yeah, <laughs> to ask us that question and not go, what's your uniform? <laughs> yeah, because we get that a lot. And we're like, it's not a uniform. Mm. We're not policemen, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it's our cultural attire. And if nothing else, like my brother said, we want to represent our culture, innit? So we are, we are creative people, so we mm. can create what we like. We don't have to like... Because when you start looking at what people wear, a lot of the times, it comes from someone else anyway, like suits and ties, that goes to the Italians, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's only a few um, cultures that you see that keep their traditional garments, you know, like you see like the Sikhs, they'll wear their, you know what I mean, their, their, their cultural head, uh, headdress, and like my brother said, the Chinese, uh, um, you know what I mean, different people, they'll wear their culture yeah. um, clothes. But the thing is, when you go back, a lot of the times you find out that most of the culture that everyone else is adopting now comes from us anyway. Mm. You know, so like you might see a, you know, Asian person wearing a sari um, and, and if, if you saw a black person wear it, you, you'd be like, oh, you're copying them because it's just, you know what I mean? But really it comes from something called the Bud Lanubi, you know, which we had. And if you go back to the walls of Egypt, you're going to see us dressing a lot of, you know what I mean, the garments that people are adopting today. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's our cultural attire. Right. And is it a lot of black and gold and, and an ankh? Is it an ankh? <laughs> <laughs> I like your question. I like your question. <laughs> yeah, should I go over it? <laughs> Another mistake people make, yeah, they call it an ankh. But, okay. but yeah, if you look at it, it's not really an ankh. Yeah. Because there's two, eh? Yeah, no, I was wondering that. Yeah. But I see on your arm there. there yeah, one. that's the ankh there. That's right. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So, so like everything we teach and, and we go through levels, yeah, so the Ankh will actually lead you to the Ankh Tui. Just like I said, belief will lead you, lead you to knowing. It's not that we don't deal with things that other people deal with, but they've got a misinterpretation for it. So, for example, you'll have the Holy Ghost, but we deal with the Holy Spirit. Two different things, you know what I mean? But well, sorry, sorry, go on. What's, what's the difference between the Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit? Do you want me to finish with the ankh first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was just touching on yeah, that. You're blowing my mind. That's <laughs> it, yeah, yeah we, we, we're going to get to that. So yeah. the ankh represents life. Yeah, yeah, okay. And if you look in, um, in Egypt on the walls, on the pyramids, you always see like our deities and our ancestors holding the ankh because it's the key to life. Whereas the cross was taken from this. So you, you're, you're looking at Christians with a cross where they, they're saying Jesus was murdered on the cross. Yeah, I did say murdered because, mm. like, it wasn't a nice death, you know. I mean, he came to save the world and then he couldn't save himself, which doesn't kind of make sense, but we can come back to that. So the Ankh <laughs> represents um, the, the key to life and the resurrection in terms of your being 
Because, like I said at the beginning, like you've been lied to, to the point where you don't know who you are anymore, you don't know what your spirituality is, so you need like a key to turn the ignition on. Right. right? So once you do that, you open up your, what we call the solar plexus. So you spark the light in you, right? We call that the green light. In the Bible, they say um, the light is in the darkness, but the darkness comprehends it not, yeah? People say, oh, he's talking about because he said the, less, the greater light and the lesser light. And people that don't understand that, they will say, that's the sun and the moon. But the, the moon doesn't have a light. Mm. Yeah, the moon is non-luminous, so it reflects the light of the sun. The reason that's so important is because once you turn that key, you become the sun, S-U-N, which they turn to S-O-N, as in the son of God. Because the sun is what gives life, yeah? So ancient Egyptians used to raise their hands to give reverence to the sun because without the sun on this planet, everyone dies. Muhammad, Jesus, everyone. Yeah, so the Ankh leads you to the Ankh Tui. This is called the Ankh Tui. But Tui in our language means two. So you have your first life where you, you were originally um, given birth and then you got kind of like indoctrinated and bamboozled and got spellbound and then now you're waking up again what we call a second resurrection in religion they teach you that you have to die first and go to heaven we say no you can be born again right here once your third eye is open and you can now start to see clearly which is really clairvoyance clairvoyance means clear vision because what it is you get back your higher powers you have four higher powers or senses let me give you another thing they do they tell you you've got five senses, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which is what? Sight, hearing, smelling, taste. But all of those are one because all of them deal with touch. Like for you to see something, light has to hit your, your retina, your eye. For you to smell something, you, you, you know, you, air and um, something has to touch your nose, yeah? The same with your taste. Something has to touch your taste buds or your tongue. The ear, you get sound waves, they have to touch your ear. All of that comes to one, which is touch or perception or awareness, yeah? The other four, which they kind of hide, is intuition, telepathy, psychometry, and as I said, clairvoyance. So with those four plus the one, you actually have five, but it's really nine mm -hmm. because of the five plus the four. This is why I said about the number nine. It's going to keep coming up when you start to deep it and go into levels, you see what I mean? So... Yeah, so I hope that's answered your question because I know I kind of went on a bit, but you know what I mean? Like that I said, we got a lot of information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was definitely interesting. Yeah. Um, I have to ask that. What's the difference between the, oh, Holy, yeah, the, ghost, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost? Okay, do you want to you go over that one? <laughs> no, where you go with this. Okay, so... <laughs> no, seriously though, like, if we were to just ask you, what's a ghost? Mm. If you weren't thinking too hard, what would you say? A, a spirit. Okay. I know you're thinking hard. A ghost is a dead person, mm. isn't it? Right. When people die, they say, oh, doppy or whatever. Yeah? yeah? So the reason I use the word ghost is because when you go to church, they say the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, who was passed on, is in the state of a being that was here but is no longer here. But they will tell you that he's still here. And, and we say, okay, where is he? They will say the Holy Ghost. Now... When you go to church and people like, they start to, um, like they're singing, they're chanting and then they get into a frenzy. And a lot of the times more like Pentecostal, Pentecostal churches and things like that, they start to foam in the mouth and they throw themselves on the floor. And they said they've caught the Holy Ghost. This is disembodied beings that are still roaming the planet. Now, a lot of times churches are built right in, right near a cemetery or there's a cemetery around the church mm. <clears throat> so what's happening is when they're beckoning and calling on these beings they come and try to utilize the physical body so they fuse with the person that's alive to utilize the body and then that's when they become uncomfortable and they f they start throwing on the floor and you know they're like that and they say they're called the holy ghost now in the scriptures especially in the bible jesus said I'm, I have to go, but I will send the comforter, yeah? In the scriptures, the comforter is referred as the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The comforter will come, 
and that's where Muhammad came in, in the um, Islamic religion. Mm. <clears throat> but when Muhammad came along, he said that uh, an angel called Gabriel or Jibril came to him. Gabriel is a Holy Spirit, meaning like when he came, he didn't put him in an uncomfortable state. He was able to just talk to him in a calm way. And it's the same way throughout the Bible, scriptures, Quran. Every time Gabriel comes, he comes with love, peace and calmness. So that's the big difference between a ghost and a, spell, um, and a spirit. Because ghosts are disembodied beings that are trapped here within this realm. And they can't leave it unless they make the grade. The spirit helps your soul to travel further. And without, like, it's like um, another way I can put it, make it easy for people to digest. You know, like when a rocket is going up, if you ever watch a, a rocket launch into space, they will launch and then like when they get past the, the atmosphere, you've got, cause you've got the spheres, right? When they get past that, they then release the, um, the stuff that was used for the pro propelling to go up. Yeah. Like, and then the, the, the other piece just floats. It's the same with your soul and your spirit. Because this is another thing, because in the Bible, you have the word soul and you have the word spirit. People mistranslate both of them into one. Because when you ask people, what's the difference between a soul and a spirit? They can't answer the question a lot of the times. Because they, they think they're both the same thing, but mm -hmm. they're not. Everything on the planet has a spirit. So trees have spirits, animals have spirits. Everything has a spirit because it's dealing with vibration. But not everything has a soul. And a soul is, remember when I talked about that ignition and kicking off your solar plexus to make you connect with the higher realms and the, do you know what I mean? Like the nine ether. So with the soul now, you can um, have emotions and you can dance and you can do things that, like I said, a tree is alive, but it doesn't, have like emotions in that way. Yeah, I hope that's helped you to understand yeah, the difference yeah. between the, the soul and the spirit. Well, of course, you know, we, we come from a different angle and people that might not be familiar with it might say, nah, nah, nah. But like I said, bring the facts and bring the proof. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm gonna ask you some, some easier, hopefully easier questions for, yeah, for yeah, viewers yeah, as well. Um, um, what, what you said previously is definitely gonna be for someone who who wants to know more and understand. Yeah. So it's very helpful, definitely. Mm. How did humans get here on, on Earth? Right, it, it, humans, you have different... Um, all human DNA time with extraterrestrial DNA. So basically, when you're talking about your Bible, you talk about God coming down, creating man. Mm -hmm. God didn't originate from here. So he would be classified as an extraterrestrial. Extraterrestrial meaning extra... Terra would be the planet and um, Astro would be the star. So anything that came from outside right. to the planet Earth would be classified as an extraterrestrial, including meteorites, bacteria, other forms of life form. So God of the Bible is an extraterrestrial. If he created man, that means the DNA or the chromosomes that he uses to create man came from him. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that would mean hu human DNA originated outside. Mm. I mean, he kind of went deep with it still. I, I would have first, <laughs> sorry, I, I'll be finished. <laughs> I would have I said that your mum and dad created you. Mm. Because what it is, religion has made people to think like, like they can't really prove it. Do you know I mean? They will say, God took the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and formed a man like Adam, yeah? This is Christianity, Islam, Judaism, they all say that. You can't take dust of the ground and form a man. That's not scientifically proven, that's not facts. So, and then it goes on even further to say he took a rib from the man to create the woman. That's not true either, because women, women were here before men. How do I know? Everyone on the planet comes from a woman. That's an actual fact. You came from your mum, you came from your mum, ca everyone came from their mum. So the woman, the black woman being first, because, you know, Africa's first before mm. every other race is, so the black woman is really the goddess because every man comes from a woman, right? Now, 
if we start going further and say, like my brother was going into, where you say, people will say, okay, if you say your mum and dad created you because you need the sperm from the man and you need the, the ovum from the woman and the woman grows the baby in her stomach, people know nine months, but it's actually 12 months because three months prior to the nine months, things are happening in the unseen world or what people call the spiritual world, yeah? So when you say your mum and dad created you, people in religion will be like, but who created them? We're like, their mum and dad. And they'll be like, who created them? Like, their mum and dad. And this can go on and on and on and on. But like my brother said is, when you start to do DNA testing, because now this is like, people didn't realise, but like from the 1953s, but officially like 2003, mm -hmm. there was a project called the Human Genome Project, right? right? Which basically broke down every single cell or genes that make up the races on the planet. So now, scientifically, they can take a DNA test from anyone and tell you exactly where you come from and what, what you're mixed with and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. There's a, a guy called Mendel, yeah? Gregor, Gregory or Gregor Mendel, he's the father of genetics. And he started the work of genetics. So when you look at the word genes or genetics, you look at G-E-N. And then you look at genealogy or genesis, this is dealing with hereditary or how things evolve and come about. So on the planet right now, you have what you call three root races, yeah? The original root race would be, let's say, the Africans. And um, through anthropology now, they, they, they would tell you that's known as the Homo naledi or the Homo habilis, yeah? That's all the African black people. Then you go to the second root race, which they would say is... Um, the Dravidian or the uh, Mongoloid race, which is like the Chinese or the Asian race. And those are known as the um, Denisovan or the Homo florensis, right? Then you have the Caucasian, which is, um, they're known as the Cro-Magnon or the Neanderthal. So now they can tell you exactly who belongs to what race. So this goes back to, as my brother said, about the DNA and the genes. But you can go even further than that. Like before this planet had life form on it or humanoid life forms, how did the life get here? That came by way of what something's known as um, panspermia. panspermia, where you get <coughs> things coming from outer space to um, basically go in the waters, germinate the water. Um, I can go into that if you want, but that's a long story. But you had the dolphins that basically germinated the water and that's how life started in the waters and then um, tsunamis and certain things took place and then beings came onto land. But there's been many, many like um, destructions of the planet, not the entire planet, but in different parts and then a restart again. And this is where Genesis is picking up of one of those when it was starting over again. And that's why I said to you, like, if you don't know the language, you're not going to know these things. So in Genesis, it's talking about the word Genesis in the Hebrew is bar, barashis, and, and it's talking about the recreation of the planet. And this is where Enki and Enlil came here, and they were looking for, for gold, as you were playing on your tape. They came here looking for gold, Anunnaki, but the, they didn't want to work because they found the atmosphere very difficult for them. So they went about creating a being to do the work in South Africa, yeah, in Monodapa, South Africa. This is where they took... The, the genes that were already evolving and they mixed their genes and created what they call a primitive worker, yeah, or a Lulu Amilu to work the mines and do the, the gold. Is, is that same as like a demigod or, or the, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right, yeah, right. yeah. Um, the demigods you can find that in like the Bible in Genesis, like 6 4, where it mm. talks about the Nephilim or the you know, those beings coming to the planet having you know, I mean, children from um, the, the Patarites or the beings that were already here evolving and produce these demigods, yeah. So that's, that's obviously before humans, right? Um, when uh, you say sorry, humans... Sorry, our, our type of human, yeah. Yeah, we've evolved over many, many, many millions of years. That's right. what I'm saying. Like the original humans would be the, the Neolithic or the, the beings in Napata or what they call ancient Egypt. Yeah, they're known as Patarites. They um, then became what you call the Sans people in South Africa. Yeah, and that's how, like, life... So if you look at the Sans people, again, going back to the DNA, everyone's DNA can be traced back to the Sans people, right. the traits that everyone on the planet has. So 
those sand people would be your original from those ancient Batites. Yeah, and then obviously um, ex other extraterrestrials came and obviously created hybrids and mixed with different people to produce. So I didn't actually finish that. So the root race is people will go um, Negroid, uh, Mongoloid, and Caucasoid. So that would be African, Asian, and then Caucasian. But those three create what we call sub-races. Mm -hmm. That's any mixture of any of those. So if a black or African mixes with a mongoloid, they'll produce a sub-race. And then if you know, either of those produces sub-races. But then you also have um, extraterrestrials and different beings that are abducting different people and producing hybrids. So you have something called neutronoid race as well, where they can take different genes from different people and create a new being that you can't really tell which one of the races or the root races they belong to. So there's a lot, there's a lot to our history and the story of the planet. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm taking no, it in. <laughs> that's all right, that's all right. I so, hope we're, we're, we're making it clear. Yeah, no, no, it's good. It's good, yeah. definitely. Um, just to get my head around it, is it kind of, would you say it's angels that colonised Earth to have a workforce for, to mine gold? Mm. Is, that, is that how you describe it? What did you, repeat that? Um, would you describe it as angels kind of colonising the Earth um, to make demigods to, to then mine the gold. Mm. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it depends on what you yeah. call angels as well. Mm. Right, right, right. Because right, yeah. there's a misconception again with that. Because it, it, if you're coming from a biblical or a religious point mm. of view, um, people think angels are little cherubs with wings. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Or like men or women with wings. But that's a picture that came from the 16th chapel where Michelangelo mm. actually painted a picture of angels with wings. But a human being cannot get above the planet more than six miles before they can't breathe and they will die. So angels can't be humans with wings, yeah? Now, back in the day when they didn't have so much information, that would make sense because they related, it, related anything that can fly to birds. Because they always like, looked up and they saw birds flying. So they just thought, okay, heaven is up there. The planet's here to come from up there to here you must fly because that's all they knew but as i said when you start to look at the scriptures and you see gable coming and you see like different they like they they traveling and coming here from what they call heaven they say jesus went to heaven and god is in heaven but you say where is heaven they say up there you say up there where mm. because up there can just be the sky it can be outside the planet. It could be the stars beyond, and you can keep going to the galaxy, to the solar system, to the universe. So where exactly is up there? You see, so what it is is that um, angels is a misinterpretation of man's like, lack of knowledge at the time to be able to relate it to extraterrestrials. Mm. And like my brother said, extra is something addition to, and terra, you're dealing with the terrain of the planet. Like you would say, anything outside the planet is celestial, yeah? So anything that comes from outside in is referred to as extra to the terrain or extraterrestrial because it's coming from outside of the planet. So any being, so Jesus would be an extraterrestrial. Mm. God would be an extraterrestrial. A meteorite can be an extraterrestrial. It's just extra to the planet Terra, which was one of the names for the planet as well in ancient times. Yeah. Right. So it's always a lot to take in. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. You know, take, we go slow, we take our time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, you're just making me have like 10 more questions. <laughs> that's what I said. Like when I went to classes and back yeah. in the day, that's what happens. You would ask a question and from that question, there's going to be like another 10 questions. Yeah. And it just keeps going because it's deep. You know, like I said, we've been lied to for years, for 6,000 years to the point where you really need to relearn everything again. And you have to have that open mind to be like, you know what, I'm a baby again. Let mm. me just soak it all up and do your research, check it out, you know. But nowadays, there's a lot of like social media, TikTok, and you have, um, you know, Instagram and Facebook and all of that, that you can just search and research and you hear mm. different views and people are talking about these things. They may not have it all accurate and exact, you know, like how we do, mm. but... Um, <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like we're welcoming to everyone. And um, if you start your journey, you will, you will find your way just by asking questions and just learning. You know what I mean? We're still learning. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we ain't even got it yet. You yeah. know what I mean? There's still a lot for us to learn as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. Where where did God come from? <laughs> you see, again, when you say God, yeah, <laughs> or oh, which God is the... that's the point? Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, point. Yeah. You see what I mean? Like, because <laughs> everyone has their version of what they consider God. Mm -hmm. But that's why I gave you the Quran and I gave you the Bible um, and I gave you like the Torah because if we take each one of those, like obviously in Arabic they're going to say Allah. Mm. And when you start to learn Arabic, you have, like I said, the singular and then you have the plural, which is Allah and you have Allahumma. And in the, in, in the Hebrew, you will have Elo or Elohim. And, you know, if you go to the Greek, you're going to have different names like there's different names for what people are calling God you go to the Hindus you go to the Anunnaki you go to the it depends on what your perception or concept of, of God is but um, I can tell you in the Bible where if you read um, Revelation 3 14 it tells you that God was created <laughs> yeah it says Atom witnessed the creation mm. of God so who, who in, if you go off the Bible story then Revelations who, who created God Atom and he was a tomb. A tomb is an ancient Egyptian deity. Mm. This is where um, you got like a tomb, um, um, a moon. These are all e ancient Egyptian names. Yeah. This is why in religion, everyone says at the end of their prayers, what in Islam they say, Amin. In Christianity, they say, Amen. Yeah. yeah. If you study languages, you will see that the way the phonetics of the language is Amin is a moon. Yeah, and Amun is one of the deities of ancient Egypt, or what people call Kemet. So, and he had a wife. You had Amun and Amunet. Yeah, you had different, like what we call the Ogdoads or the Nine Ineads. These are the original deities of ancient Tamre or Egypt. And so Amun is a being, like they had children. Um, so what I'm saying, the concept of God being this being that is sitting in a, a throne in heaven, doesn't make sense mm. if you really think about it because he's supposed to be omnipotent omnipresent yeah which means that he's everything he's everywhere and he knows everything right how can he sit inside a chair that means the chair is bigger than him like you you couldn't fit into that chair if you was big too big for the chair right so for the concept of a god sitting in heaven the fact that he's sitting down means he's got a bottom mm. and if he's got a bottom He's got to have legs because you can't just have a bottom floating in heaven. You see what I mean? Like when you start to piece it together, so he's got to have legs. If he's got a legs and he's got a bottom, that means he's going to have hands and he's going to have, do you know what I mean, a full body. And then when you go into the scriptures, he's talking, he's walking in the garden, he's asking questions, he's saying things. And like, so my, the concept of God through a religious um, perspective yeah. is just dealing with higher beings that have evolved and quite intelligent to a different level. Do you know what I mean? But um, our ancestors are what we would refer to as gods or gods and goddesses. So when you go into ancient Egypt, you have like Amun, you have, a, you have Ra, you have Isis. And this is where the stories that you have in Christianity, for example, have been taken from. Because mm. you've got Osiris, Isis and Horus. Yeah. You go into ancient Sumeria, that becomes the, Mu the Muzi. Um, Ishtar. Ishtar and Tammuz mm. that comes into Christianity and you get God the Father Mary oh well they, they kind of leave out Mary <laughs> they got God the Father <laughs> the Son and the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost yeah. and leave out Mary yeah. where Mary should really be very important because she gave birth to Jesus yeah. you see what I mean so yeah so yeah. I don't know if that answered your question on, on God so a God can be defined as someone in control so do you think there's, there's one God or multiple? There's multiple. Yeah. yeah. It says that in every... That's what I said to you about the English is what throws people off because when you translate from the Semitic languages or Kemetic languages into English, you lose that sense of plurality. You know what I mean? Because it becomes a singular. They say one God. They say there's only one God. Check this out, as I said before. Christianity, Islam, Judaism all say there's only one God, but then he says, but you're not allowed to have any other gods but me. Mm. Which in itself tells you there's others that I can choose to have. Were well, they not referring to kind of idols or what someone would see as God? What do you mean? I don't understand. Um, if you idolise something, you might, you might see it as God. Yeah, you could look at it that way. Because even in um, 
in, in Mecca back then, there were lots of idols. There's an idol called Alat. If you go into the history, yeah. do you know what I mean? You had Allah, Alat, and like you were saying. But the point is, even if you're looking at it as a, a statue or whatever, that means you're saying there is more than one God then. Right. I see what you mean. <laughs> but even in the Bible, like uh, Exodus 7 1, yeah. Moses was made of God by God. Mm. Was it? Yeah. yeah, Exodus 7 1. If you go into um, John 10 34, Jesus said that he's not written in your law. I said, Ye are gods. Psalms, Psalms 8 8 2, 2 6. 6. Yeah. Ye are gods. All of you are gods and children of the Most High. So it's, it's written in there. But in the English, they give you that small G. Little G and big G. All that, in, Which is in, not true yeah, either. In Greek and yeah. in, in English, the, the, yeah. It would, There's no it, such it, thing as a yeah. little G, a big G when you go into the languages. You see, it's a trick like, oh, where, like for example, if you started reading the Bible from the beginning, you get words like Elohim, mm. Adonai, um, what's the other ones? There's so many. Ad like, Adon yeah, I see Adonai. Adonai. Yeah, there's so many words that like, when they translate into English, it's just Bal God, 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 <laughs> God, God. Yeah, Yahweh, you know what I mean? Jehovah, mm. which again doesn't make sense. There's no J's or V's in Hebrew. So you can't make up words like Jesus and Jehovah because that is a mistranslation. Because in the Hebrew, the J would be a Y. You see, and it's a Ya, Hu, Wa, Yahuwah. And there's no Vs either in the Hebrew. Mm. So you can't make up words like Jehovah because you can't get a J and you can't get a V. And, and so what it is, is a mistranslation of Yahuwah. And like we say, don't believe us. Anything we say, you can go and research and check it out. Do you know what I mean? Because we're not really here to put down anyone or whatever. We just come with the facts and, you know what I mean, just basically teaching for people that want to learn and know. Um, yeah. Um, if you Google what is the oldest religion, it comes up with uh, Hinduism, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is that, is there, do you believe, sorry, <laughs> is there anything that predates that? Of course. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, <laughs> again, me bust the, the spell. Google doesn't know everything. Mm. Everyone <laughs> thinks that, like, you've got to remember Google, there's someone behind Google. Mm. Who programs Google? Like, I've done tests on Google, and I'm, I'm going to address the question, but what I'm saying is, like, I've searched black woman in Google, yeah? Right. And what you get, you're like, <laughs> mm. do you know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, when you, say, when you say Hinduism, yeah, Hinduism is, is old, yeah? But nothing predates the African, and that's why I gave you the scientific facts originally about the Homa Naledi, the Homa Habilis and all that, because this is something that world over the scientists are saying at the moment. And remember what I said to you that different extra extraterrestrials came here, so you, each race on the planet has their own extraterrestrials. Mm. So like the beings from Nirvana came to Bali or in what they call in India today, and you have like, you know, um, Brahma, Shivu, all the, you know, they, they gods, some of those are extraterrestrials from the planet Nirvana, as I said. What it is, you have the three root races, and they're all related to extraterrestrials. So the African race would be re related to what people call the Natiru, or we say in the t proper tones, the Nataru, right? They come from Orion and, and um, Sirius. But you have like Pleiadians, Draconians, you have extra biolog biological entities or what people call greys but there's different species of greys you have the Romadians, you have do you know what I mean you have the Duanis you have the Teros you have the Deros you have Maccabeans there's so many different species of beings that have mixed in with um, people on the planet you know so it's not as simple as and this is what people are calling gods you know from the different races but as we say we, we represent the the Wusa battle, the culture of the African. Yeah, instead of using God, I think you should use modern day term extraterrestrials, because that's what they are. All yeah. extraterrestrials, if you were to call it our like, yeah, all extraterrestrials. That's what's going and on. And some man. people like <laughs> might not like it, I might not sit too well, but it, you know what I mean? That's what it's they the are, man. And let me give it, make it simple, innit? Like, yeah. every scripture says, God, Allah, blew into man, and man became a living soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So if we accept that, what's the essence of you then? Not this body, not the physical suit, not the bacteria that is your body. Because there's something keeping you alive right now. Mm. And at some point, when whatever that is leaves, 
your body is just still and then rigor mortis sets in and you get hard and you know what I mean and like you're lifeless and everyone's like he's dead so what was it that was keeping you alive and if we agree that's the essence of the most high Allah Jehovah whatever terms we want to use to call it that's not from here so that's an extraterrestrial meaning it's something extra from somewhere else and then we say it goes back and then we will say heaven or hell where, you know what I mean, you're going back to, if you're a good person, you're going to go to heaven. If you're a bad person, you're going to go to hell. But when we start deep in that, it doesn't even make sense mm -hmm. in the sense of why would a loving, caring God create something like hell? What would be the purpose of creating a place to torture people, for people to suffer, and they say forever? Mm -hmm. Like you're going to burn eternally forever. So you don't, you don't believe in heaven or, or hell? We don't believe, remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have to deal, we have to deal with that because like I said you can believe what you want yeah. it's fine like but we like to know mm. yeah so prove it innit right. the word heaven actually comes from the word haven which is dealing with where ships dock you know like a space station and they're building a space they've been building a space station now Elon Musk and um, Virgin, mm. what's his name, Richard Branson, Branson all these yeah. people are trying to get, go, go to space and go out of it. So what I'm saying is a lot of it is just misinterpretations yeah. and a lack of knowledge, what people are interpreting things as, you know what I mean? So heaven, it's just different places, constellations and mm. different places you can go to. Because if you look up the word heaven in the New Testament, you get the word orenos. Yeah. Orenos, would, what does that sound similar like? Orenos, what does that sound like? Rain? Huh? Rain? He said rain. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> close. But um, oh, it, that's the Greek. Yeah. So. Oh, oh, I am. Right, right, right. Yeah. And you can find that in Amos 5 8, mm. Job 9 9. This is all in the, in the, in the scriptures. Yeah. So um, what we have to do is say, I think if you ask us a question, we can give you like the belief. And then we give you the, the real facts, yeah, the actual, actual facts, facts of what it is. Yeah, yeah. that kind of mm. makes it clear, I think. Yeah, yeah I, want, I want your knowledge on the, on the yeah. facts. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, in Genesis, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Yeah. But then the sun was created a few days later. What was this light that God created? Let there be light. Remember, number one, this is Enki and Enlil doing this work, mm. yeah? And you have to go backwards to why this was taking place. That's why I said to you that in Genesis, they call it Genesis and people think that's the beginning, but it's not, it's, it's the reconstruction because there was a meteorite shower that hit the planet and the, the sun was blocked. Yeah, the rays of the sun was blocked. So the, the planet wasn't actually, it was like, the, the, there was hardly any life on it. So what Enki was doing is he was terraforming the planet by clearing the dust clouds and this is the being that they're talking about when they're saying, he said, let there be light. Remember, it also goes on to say the greater light and the lesser light. And I already explained that before because people think that the greater light is the sun and the lesser light is the moon. But as I said, you're dealing with the light within you. Yeah, because like I said, um, it says the, um, the light is in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not. Mm -hmm. So you're really dealing with your solar plexus. When you look at the word solar, I can actually go back. Let me give you like the, the solar, the, our solar system right now, yeah, how it was formed. Yeah? So you got um, all the planets in this solar system were part of a planet before that planet explode. Yeah? yeah, that planet was known as Ohm. Yeah, that planet itself was once a part of a, another planet before that called Sal. And that planet was ruled by two beings called Sal and Arena, which is where you get the, they put their two names together to give you the word solar, yeah? Because solar deals with the sun. That, that um, planet called Sal exploded to form the Milky Way. And then the Milky Way, as I said, the planets from there exploded to form our solar system. When the planet, you have to know how suns are born and how they die. And the evolution of a sun, will, when it explodes, like the pieces of the, of the, of the um, sun, they get thrown out and then they get caught in the magnetic pool of the, the mass. So in our solar system at the moment, the sun is literally, high, it's now just hydrogen and helium. 
that is constantly burning. That hydrogen and helium can burn for millions of years, but at some point, it's just fuel, like when you put fuel in your, in your tank. At some point, that's going to run out. Mm -hmm. And when it, when it runs out, then people that are living on the planets that are orbiting that sun, they go think of how to survive. And this has happened many, many times. So when you're saying sun, light, yeah, light, when you look in the sky, you see all the stars, those are suns. But there's darkness surrounding all those suns. No matter how far you go, there's always darkness because light travels, yeah? Light travels at a speed, 186,272 feet per second. And no matter how fast it travels, it could not escape the darkness. Yeah, so the, the darkness is so deep that when you're saying God created the light, you're really talking about one of these suns or one of these stars, which then form, like I said, solar system, and then you get galaxies. And now they've got um, the latest telescope they've got is called the James Webb Telescope, which they can look further now to see like the creation of like universes. And before that, they were using the Hubble Telescope. So what I'm saying is like, when you're looking at what people are calling the beginning, there isn't one beginning, there's many beginnings. But people just go back to like the beginning of our universe. But there's seven universes. I mean, some of this stuff people may not be familiar with or may not have heard, but it's not just like one light, because light is actually um, one of the problems because we can go into how light forms with the photons and now that you use the word illumination, tie into the Illuminati, the people that are running the world and they're blinding people with the light of religion, you see. So it, there's a lot more to the story. So when you start going into the Illuminati, because that means the illuminated ones, but as I said, darkness precedes light. Because in the Bible, it tells you, it says, God said, let there be light, as you just quoted. So if God is saying, let there be light, what state is in before he creates the light? Darkness. So darkness is actually better, and it goes into racism and all of that, because like light people are favored over darker people and you know like i said it, it's kind of deep when we go into the whole light and dark and um because if we were to lock off the lights in this room right now and we never met each other and we were just in pitch black blackness you would only feel our vibrations of each other you wouldn't be able to discriminate about who's taller who's shorter who's lighter who's you know what i mean that's what that comes with light because light brought about chaos right. yeah but as i said we can go even further if you want to but you know we could be we could be all night you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's really up to you how, how much of time you want to you know what i mean but yeah, yeah. For, i'm gonna ask you yeah, a few random questions yeah um, go ahead what is your knowledge on whether the earth is flat or round okay it's not flat what, what or should i say, say yeah. again with everything here yeah, it's a perspective like, you can look at something from one perspective and it will appear a certain way. Mm -hmm. You look at it from another perspective, it's not going to be the same. So what it is, is like, there is information that people are using to try and say the earth is flat. But I'd be like, okay, if the earth is flat, is it a square or is it a circle? Even if it's flat. Because you can see that thing in a circle and this is a black thing here, square, yeah? Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Or what's the shape of it? If it's flat, I'm just trying to show you how simple we can look at this. If it's a square, that means you can get to the edge of it and fall off. Either, either way you go. Now, if it's, even if it's a circle, you can still get to the edges. Yeah. So when they're saying the Earth is flat, it's like, okay, we know the circumference of the planet. We know the diameter. We know the radius. Because this is all mathematics, yeah? Because the pyramids of Egypt were built and they match up with like the star constellation of Orion. This is supreme mathematics. How are they able to, to do that from a flat... Like if you're not on an aerial projection, when you're looking down on something, it's different from when you're looking at it from the side. Like most people, when they think of the Orion star constellation, they see like the two at the top, the two at the bottom with the belt, yeah? Now... If you were looking at it from another angle, you're not going to see that. So what I'm saying is like, you've got satellites up there now, you've got um, 
the way nature works. Yeah? The way nature works is things are formed from a dot and then they spiral outwards. Mm -hmm. yeah? So like the universe, the uni means one, and then it spirals outwards. So you look at nature, um, you look at the Fibonacci, see the way things are formed, it's all dealing with things being round. Yeah? And so I'm saying, if you took... I've, I, know, I normally do this uh, experience to kind of, um, this experiment to show you. If you took a square and you took a pencil and you put it through the middle of it and you spin it, do you know what you're going to see? What? A circle. circle. <clears throat> right, right. Because when it's moving, yeah. it turns into a circle. So, so what it is, is just literally perspectives um, of how you're seeing and looking at things. So when you're saying the earth is flat, okay, People, they say there's a dome and that that's how you can't get out of it because it's flat. But like I said, um, there's, there's too much evidence that supports it being not flat. So we don't, we don't advocate that it's flat in that sense. But as I said, there's ways you can look at it that may, may appear that way. But it's not, it's not, to me, it's not factual. It's not recorded by the ancients anyway. <laughs> Our ancestors never recorded the, the earth or the sphere, globe, as, as flat. If you look at all the ancient carving, you see it's round. You don't see no flat. So these yeah. people come up with these new, these concepts of flat earth. It's just like... Uh, and then you've got like <laughs> the Anunnaki yeah. and all these other, you know what I mean? Like stories that explain where they come from. And, you know, they say in Genesis that angels came down from heaven. Yeah. Um, but again, if you're a, a flat earth theorist, believer or whatever, yeah. do, do you then not support the Bible and the Quran and the religious books? Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> which one is it? Like we have to, which, which one? Are we, if we say we do believe that, then they're saying God is in heaven, Allah is in heaven and all of that. Then you're, next minute you're saying flat earth. So everything started from the earth. It, it doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What, what, what inspires, inspires you, you in life? Seeing us as, as, as a people like do better for, for ourselves, coming up with, um, yeah, making things better for, and with the information as well, once one applies that, make, transforms one into a better person. And like with that knowledge, you can like spread it, try and help other people as well, become better people. We've been suppressed so long, for 6,000 years, so with this information is it's in line with us, it's doing better for us. Yeah. Making us more respect one another. On that kind of aspect there, yeah. For me, um, everyone has potential in it. Mm. Like, it's being able to tap into your potential and bring the best out of yourself right. in any field because, honestly, you are the God. Do you know mm. what I mean? And when you say that to people, like we already gave you quotes like, Psalms 82, 6. Exodus 1, John 10, 34. John 10, 34. Where it, it literally tells you you're God. And if you're God, you can do anything. You can create. This is the, the question I like to ask people. Did man create God or did God create man? Meaning that until someone told you about that word God, it didn't exist. So somebody had to come up with that word at some point in time. And now people are using it. So man has created the term God, but really, when you look at what and who God is, it's you, man or, males or females. So you need to bring out that, that godliness in yourself. Now, what it is, this last point, what it is is that when you are God, like the description of God is that he's all powerful, he's all knowing, he's all wise, he's the creator. You have to take on the responsibility of being a God. So you have to deal with all the suffering on the planet. You have to deal with the homelessness. You have to deal with things with love, care, make sure. That's what we say, like, in, in religion, they say God can do anything. They say in Islam, God, uh, Allah can go kun fire kun, which means be and it is. And we're like, okay, why don't he just click his finger and get rid of all the, the sin on the planet and all the wickedness and all the evil on the planet, since he can do that. And it's the same in every religion. Like, we say these things because when you then put God to the test, it doesn't add up. Like Jesus came to save the world of sin, as they, they say, but he couldn't save himself and there's still sin in the world. 
So really, when you become God, you have to take on the responsibility of everything, like making sure everyone is basically doing their best. So for me, it's looking at people's potential and getting them to spark that light, turn that key on to know that, you know, is it not written in your laws, you are God. So you can actually start, like in our community, start doing godly things. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because you say you're God and then you're doing ungodly things. It doesn't make sense, you know. So you have to take on the responsibility of building the schools, building the businesses, building the hospitals, building whatever we need. Yeah. You have to be able to do that. Or we have to be able to do that because we work together, not really individualist. Mm. Yeah, so that's the passion for me every day is getting up and just making sure we can link up what you guys are doing here, like, we want to thank you because, mm. like, the media now can reach the world, innit? it? Like, so what you lot are doing, make, giving us the platform and the opportunity to be able to speak, and then you don't know who's listening, who this is going to spark off, and that might be their journey, wherever it takes them, you know what I mean? But at least their potential, because mm. some people are afraid to ask questions. And we're like, no, when you're a child, mum wants this, mum wants that, you ask questions all the time until your parents get fed up with you and they go, shut up. <laughs> but yeah, just ask questions and learn and just know that you have this potential. You can be anything you want to be. You know? So yeah, thank you guys for, for having us. Yeah.